Question 1. What is the primary role of Cisco Identity Services Engine EYES, in network security? A. Network monitoring and traffic analysis. B. Intrusion detection and prevention. C. User authentication and access control. D. Data encryption and decryption. The correct answer is C. User authentication and access control. Explanation. Cisco Eyes is primarily used for user authentication and access control in network environments. It provides centralized policy management and enforcement, allowing administrators to define and enforce security policies based on user identity, device type, and other contextual factors. Question 2. Which component of Cisco Eyes is responsible for collecting and analyzing endpoint data to determine compliance with security policies? A. Policy Service Node, PSN, B. Monitoring and Troubleshooting Node, MNT, C. Identity Services Engine, EYES, Administration Node. D. Posture Services Node, PSN. The correct answer is D. Posture Services Node, PSN. Explanation. The Posture Services Node, PSN, in Cisco EYES is responsible for collecting endpoint data, assessing endpoint compliance with security policies, and enforcing policy-based remediation actions. It plays a critical role in ensuring endpoint security posture compliance within the network. Question 3. What is the purpose of Role-Based Access Control, RBAC, in Cisco EYES? A. To assign specific roles and permissions to network devices. B. To restrict access to network resources based on user roles. C. To monitor and analyze network traffic for security threats. D. To encrypt data transmission between network devices. The correct answer is B. To restrict access to network resources based on user roles. Explanation. Role-based access control, RBAC, in Cisco EYES is used to restrict access to network resources based on predefined roles assigned to users or groups. RBAC allows administrators to define granular access policies, ensuring that users only have access to the resources and services necessary for their roles. Question 4. What is the primary characteristic of a standalone deployment model for Cisco EYES? A. It consists of a single EYES node performing all functions B. It involves multiple EYES nodes distributed across different locations C. It requires a dedicated EYES server for each network segment D. It relies on third-party identity services for authentication. The correct answer is A. It consists of a single EYES node performing all functions. Explanation. In a standalone deployment model, Cisco EYES consists of a single EYES node that performs all functions, including authentication, authorization, and policy enforcement. This deployment model is suitable for small-scale deployments or environments with limited requirements. While standalone deployments are simple to set up and manage, they lack redundancy and scalability compared to distributed or high-availability deployment models. Question 5. Mr. Thompson is configuring authentication policies in Cisco EYES. What is the purpose of an authentication policy? A. To define the criteria for identifying and classifying network traffic. B. To specify the rules for authenticating users and devices accessing the network. C. To monitor network devices and detect security vulnerabilities. D. To encrypt communication channels between network devices. The correct answer is B. To specify the rules for authenticating users and devices accessing the network. Explanation. Authentication policies in Cisco EYES define the rules and criteria for authenticating users and devices accessing the network. These policies specify the authentication methods, protocols, and conditions required for successful user and device authentication, ensuring secure access to network resources. Question 6. What distinguishes a distributed deployment model for Cisco EYES from a standalone deployment? A. 
It involves multiple eyes nodes working together in a cluster B. It requires separate eyes deployments for each network segment C. It relies on third-party identity services for policy enforcement D. It utilizes a single eyes node for all functions. The correct answer is A. It involves multiple eyes nodes working together in a cluster. Explanation. In a distributed deployment model, Cisco eyes consists of multiple eyes nodes deployed across different locations or network segments, working together as a cluster. This architecture provides scalability, redundancy, and fault tolerance by distributing the workload across multiple nodes and enabling seamless failover in case of node failure. Question 7. What is a key advantage of a high availability deployment model for Cisco eyes? A. It reduces the complexity of the deployment B. It eliminates the need for redundancy C. It ensures uninterrupted operation in case of node failure D. It requires fewer resources than other deployment models. The correct answer is C. It ensures uninterrupted operation in case of node failure. Explanation. A high availability, HA, huh, deployment model for Cisco eyes ensures uninterrupted operation in case of node failure by implementing redundant components such as secondary eyes nodes, load balancers, and database replication. In the event of a primary node failure, traffic is automatically redirected to the secondary node, minimizing downtime and ensuring continuous service availability. Question 8. How does Cisco Eyes facilitate network segmentation in a corporate environment? A. By implementing virtual private network, VPN, connections between network segments. B. By enforcing access control policies based on user identity and device attributes. C. By monitoring network traffic and identifying security vulnerabilities. D. By encrypting data transmissions between network devices. The correct answer is B. By enforcing access control policies based on user identity and device attributes. Explanation. Cisco Eyes facilitates network segmentation by enforcing access control policies based on user identity and device attributes. By dynamically classifying and segmenting network traffic, Cisco Eyes ensures that users and devices are only granted access to the network resources and services appropriate for their roles and permissions. Question 9. Which deployment model for Cisco Eyes is recommended for organizations with stringent uptime requirements? A. Standalone Deployment B. Distributed Deployment C. High Availability Deployment D. Cloud-based Deployment. The correct answer is C. High Availability Deployment. Explanation. For organizations with stringent uptime requirements, a high availability deployment model for Cisco Eyes is recommended. High availability deployments provide redundancy, fault tolerance, and seamless failover capabilities to ensure uninterrupted operation even in the event of hardware or software failures. Question 10. What is a consideration when choosing between a distributed and a high availability deployment model for Cisco Eyes? A. Cost effectiveness B. Scalability requirements C. Number of network segments D. Physical location of endpoints. The correct answer is B. Scalability requirements. Explanation. When choosing between a distributed and a high availability deployment model for Cisco Eyes, scalability requirements should be considered. Distributed deployments are suitable for environments with multiple network segments or locations that require scalability and load distribution across multiple eyes nodes. Question 11. Which authentication method requires users to provide both a username and a password for network access? A. MAC Authentication Bypass, MAB, B. Certificate-based authentication C. 802.1x Authentication D. Web Authentication. The correct answer is C, 802.1x authentication. Explanation. 802.1x authentication is an industry standard authentication method that requires users to provide both a username and a password, 
as well as potentially additional factors such as digital certificates or one-time passwords, for network access. This method provides strong authentication and is commonly used in enterprise environments to secure access to wired and wireless networks. Question 12. In a distributed deployment of Cisco Eyes, which component manages the configuration and policy replication across all nodes in the deployment? A. Policy Service Node, PSN. B. Administration Node, Admin Node. C. Monitoring and Troubleshooting Node, MNT. D. Policy Administration Node, PAN. The correct answer is D. Policy Administration Node, PAN. Explanation. In a distributed deployment of Cisco Eyes, the Policy Administration Node, PAN, is responsible for managing the configuration and policy replication across all nodes in the deployment. It acts as the centralized management point for policy definition and distribution. Question 13. What is the role of the Monitoring and Troubleshooting Node, MNT, in Cisco Eyes architecture? A to enforce network access policies and authenticate users and devices. b. To manage the configuration and policy replication across all nodes. c. To collect and analyze endpoint data for compliance monitoring and troubleshooting. d. To provide a centralized interface for administrative tasks and policy configuration. The correct answer is c to collect and analyze endpoint data for compliance monitoring and troubleshooting. Explanation. The Monitoring and Troubleshooting Node, MNT, in Cisco Eyes architecture is responsible for collecting and analyzing endpoint data, performing compliance monitoring, and troubleshooting network issues. It provides valuable insights into network activities and helps identify security risks and policy violations. Question 14. How does Cisco Eyes achieve scalability in large-scale deployments? A. By deploying multiple standalone instances of Cisco Eyes. B. By implementing a distributed deployment with multiple nodes. C. By increasing the capacity of individual Eyes nodes through hardware upgrades. D. By integrating with third-party identity management systems. The correct answer is B. By implementing a distributed deployment with multiple nodes. Explanation. Cisco Eyes achieves scalability in large-scale deployments by implementing a distributed deployment with multiple nodes. Distributed deployments allow for load balancing, redundancy, and the efficient distribution of processing tasks across multiple nodes, ensuring high availability and performance. Question 15. What is the primary purpose of authorization policies in Cisco Identity Services Engine, EYES? A. To authenticate users and devices accessing the network. B. To enforce compliance with security policies and regulations. C. To control access based on user roles and attributes. D. To monitor network traffic and detect security threats. The correct answer is C, to control access based on user roles and attributes. Explanation. Authorization policies in Cisco Eyes are used to control access to network resources based on user roles and attributes. These policies specify the level of access granted to users and devices based on their identity, group membership, and other contextual factors. Question 16. What is the primary purpose of BYOD? Bring your own device. Implementation in Cisco Eyes. A. To restrict access to corporate devices only. B. To enhance security by allowing personal devices to connect to the network. C. To manage software updates on personal devices. D. To monitor employee productivity. The correct answer is B. To enhance security by allowing personal devices to connect to the network. Explanation. BYOD implementation in Cisco Eyes aims to enhance security by allowing personal devices owned by employees or guests to connect to the corporate network while enforcing policies to mitigate potential security risks. By integrating with device registration and onboarding processes, Cisco Eyes ensures that personal devices meet certain security requirements. 
Question 17. Which feature of Cisco Eyes facilitates the onboarding of BYOD devices onto the corporate network? A. Guest access portals B. Identity source sequences C. Endpoint profiling D. Device registration. The correct answer is D. Device registration. Explanation. Device registration is a feature of Cisco Eyes that facilitates the onboarding of BYOD devices onto the corporate network. With device registration, users can register their personal devices with Cisco Eyes, allowing administrators to enforce security policies, perform endpoint profiling, and apply access control rules based on the device's attributes and compliance status. Question 18. What is the purpose of guest access management in Cisco Eyes? A. To restrict access to corporate devices only B. To monitor guest network usage for compliance purposes C. To provide temporary network access to visitors and contractors D. To manage software updates on guest devices. The correct answer is C. To provide temporary network access to visitors and contractors. Explanation Guest access management in Cisco Eyes is designed to provide temporary network access to visitors, contractors, and other non-employee users who require connectivity to the corporate network for a limited duration. By configuring guest access portals and policies, administrators can authenticate and authorize guest users, enforce access controls, and track guest network usage for compliance and auditing purposes. Question 19. What action does Cisco Eyes take when an endpoint device fails posture assessment? A. Grants full access to network resources. B. Quarantines the endpoint device in a restricted network segment. C. Initiates a system reboot on the endpoint device. D. Generates an alert for the network administrator. The correct answer is B quarantines the endpoint device in a restricted network segment. Explanation. When an endpoint device fails posture assessment, Cisco Eyes can quarantine the device in a restricted network segment to prevent it from accessing sensitive resources. This action helps contain potential security threats and provides time for remediation before granting full network access. Question 20. Which authentication method is commonly used for guest access management in Cisco Eyes? A. MAC Authentication Bypass, MAB. B. 802.1x Authentication C. Web Authentication D. Certificate-Based Authentication. The correct answer is C. Web Authentication. Explanation. Web Authentication is commonly used for guest access management in Cisco I's deployments. With Web Authentication, Guest users are redirected to a web portal where they can authenticate using credentials provided by the organization or by self-registering for temporary access. This method provides a simple and intuitive way for guests to access the network while allowing administrators. Question 21. How does Cisco Identity Services Engine, EYES, integrate with Network Access Control, NAC, solutions to enforce security policies? A by providing real-time threat intelligence feeds to NAC appliances. B. By leveraging NAC protocols to exchange policy information with network devices. C. By encrypting network traffic between EYES and NAC components. D. By deploying NAC agents on endpoint devices for policy enforcement. The correct answer is B by leveraging NAC protocols to exchange policy information with network devices. Explanation. Cisco Eyes integrates with NAC solutions by leveraging NAC protocols, such as RADIUS and SNMP, to exchange policy information with network devices. This integration allows Eyes to enforce security policies and control access to network resources based on endpoint compliance and user identity. Question 22. What role does posture assessment play in network security with Cisco Eyes? A. It evaluates the security posture of network devices based on installed applications. B. It enforces access control policies based on user roles and permissions. 
c. It monitors network traffic for signs of malicious activity or security breaches. d. It authenticates users and devices before granting access to network resources. The correct answer is a. It evaluates the security posture of network devices based on installed applications. Explanation. Posture assessment in Cisco Eyes evaluates the security posture of network devices based on criteria such as installed applications, antivirus status, and operating system patches. It helps ensure that devices connecting to the network meet security requirements before granting access to resources. Question 23. What is the primary purpose of implementing device administration policies in Cisco Eyes? A. To restrict access to corporate devices only B. To enhance security by controlling access to network devices C. To manage software updates on network devices D. To monitor employee productivity. The correct answer is B. To enhance security by controlling access to network devices. Explanation. Implementing device administration policies in Cisco Eyes allows organizations to enhance security by controlling access to network devices such as switches and routers. By defining policies based on user roles, device types, and authentication methods, administrators can enforce granular access controls, restrict administrative privileges, and audit device management activities to prevent unauthorized access and mitigate security risks. Question 24. Mr. Rodriguez is configuring endpoint compliance checks in Cisco Eyes. Which aspect of endpoint security does posture assessment primarily evaluate? A. Device ownership and user identity. B. Network bandwidth usage and traffic patterns. C. Security configuration and patch management. D. Geographic location and network topology. The correct answer is C. Security configuration and patch management. Explanation. Posture assessment in Cisco Eyes primarily evaluates the security configuration and patch management of endpoint devices. It checks for compliance with security policies, such as antivirus status, firewall settings, and software patch levels, to ensure devices meet security requirements. Question 25. What role does certificate services integration play in Cisco Eyes deployments? A. It allows for secure device authentication and authorization using digital certificates. B. It enables SNMP monitoring of network devices. C. It manages software updates on network devices. D. It facilitates network traffic encryption using SSL, TLS. The correct answer is A. It allows for secure device authentication and authorization using digital certificates. Explanation. Certificate services integration in Cisco Eyes deployments allows for secure device authentication and authorization using digital certificates. By integrating with certificate authorities, CAs, and leveraging certificate-based authentication methods such as EAPTLS, Extensible Authentication Protocol, Transport Layer Security. Question 26. What is the purpose of using identity groups in authentication policies? A. To define the types of devices allowed on the network. B. To specify the actions taken when a user attempts to access the network. C. To group users based on common attributes for policy enforcement. D. To manage software updates on network devices. The correct answer is C to group users based on common attributes for policy enforcement. Explanation. Identity groups in authentication policies are used to group users based on common attributes, such as department, job role, or location, for policy enforcement purposes. By associating users with identity groups, administrators can apply different access control policies, network resources, and permissions based on the group membership. Question 27. Which authentication method is commonly used for guest network access in Cisco Eyes deployments? A. 802.1x Authentication B. MAC Authentication Bypass, MAB. C. Certificate-based Authentication D. Web Authentication.
The correct answer is D. Web authentication. Explanation. Web authentication is commonly used for guest network access in Cisco IIS deployments. With web authentication, users are redirected to a web portal where they can authenticate using credentials provided by the organization or by self-registering for temporary access. This method provides a simple and intuitive way for guests to access the network while allowing administrators to enforce policies and capture necessary information for auditing and compliance purposes. Question 28. In Cisco Eyes, what is an identity source sequence used for? A. To configure routing protocols for network traffic B. To define the order in which identity sources are consulted during authentication C. To manage software updates on network devices D. To specify the types of devices allowed on the network. The correct answer is B. To define the order in which identity sources are consulted during authentication. Explanation. An identity source sequence in Cisco Eyes is used to define the order in which identity sources, such as Active Directory, LDAP, or internal user databases, are consulted during the authentication process. Question 29. Which type of Cisco Eyes node is responsible for enforcing network access policies and authenticating users and devices? A. Policy Service Node, PSN, B. Administration Node, Admin Node, C. Monitoring and Troubleshooting Node, MNT, D. Policy Administration Node, PAN. The correct answer is A. Policy Service Node, PSN. Explanation. The Policy Service Node, PSN, in Cisco I's architecture is responsible for enforcing network access policies, authenticating users and devices, and applying policy-based controls to regulate access to network resources. Question 30. What is the primary function of an authentication policy in Cisco I's? A. To define the types of devices allowed on the network B. To specify the actions taken when a user attempts to access the network C to configure network routing protocols D, to manage software updates on network devices. The correct answer is B, to specify the actions taken when a user attempts to access the network. Explanation. An authentication policy in Cisco Eyes specifies the actions taken when a user or device attempts to access the network. This includes defining the authentication methods, identity sources, and conditions for granting access, as well as specifying the actions to be taken upon successful or failed authentication attempts.